what's going on out there American truckers uh, this video here is gonna be a little bit dark but it's not gonna matter because I'm gonna be putting a lot of pictures up throughout this video um, pictures of my bottom hopper and different loads like that throughout this video all right this video here is going to be mainly to, to educate those who are thinking of hauling bottom hopper or uh, may think they might haul bottom hopper at some point in their life or just want to know what bottom hopper is all about. We all see them out there on the roads. Maybe you want to know what they do, how they get paid, all that kind of stuff. All that's going to be right here in this video. And as a disclaimer, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But I'm going to tell you how I used to figure it kind of how I used to do it and what it is and I'm sure if there's anybody out there that hauls bottom hoppers currently they'll hop down in them comments and be more than happy to uh, tell you how they do it or maybe some better ways okay I'm no expert but I do know it a little bit so let's get into that welcome to trucking with old snapper of course I'm old snapper that's my CB handle that's my nickname uh, some people call me old snapper some people call me old snapper but either way as far as I know out here I'm the only snapper um, I've never heard anybody else on the radio that's been called that uh, that that nickname for me goes way back all the way back to way before I started driving um, I kind of have a I can be real chill and real humble but if something happens or I feel disrespected, I can flip switch and go completely another direction really quick. So that's where that nickname comes from for those of y'all that are new. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all your support. We got some of the best subscribers on this channel. Don't get a lot of drama. Really good guys. Um, some new to trucking. Some been in it a while. They have no problem answering questions if you have a question put it out there even if i can't get to it one of the other drivers will get to it um there's a really good group of sub subscribers on this channel and i appreciate all of you all right first off what is a bottom hopper oh crap hang on a minute that guy looks like he's about to hit me please don't hit me okay no he's not gonna hit me who kind of snuck up on me anyway first off what is a bottom hopper well, I'm gonna put a picture of one up here I'm gonna put a picture of the one I used to drive um, I did bottom hopper for a couple different situations I did it for CJL cartridge out of uh, Huntsville Alabama for a while and uh, I also did it for H&M out of Omaha Nebraska um, H&M, awesome company. Uh, CJL Cartage, I don't even know if they're still around. They only had about four trucks. Um, but the picture you see up there, that is a bottom hopper. The few pictures I'm putting up right about now. That's what they look like. Now, they, they got little different shapes. Sometimes they're uh, beveled on the back. Sometimes they have electronic tarps or, or electric tarps on top. Um... I believe I never I don't, I've never operated one but I believe they have some that have electric doors on the bottom um, but that's that's the gist you we see them mainly in the Midwest but they will be all over the country but for the most part you'll see them in Indiana Nebraska Kansas uh, North and East Texas uh, Illinois all right but that's a bottom hopper Bottom hoppers haul all sorts of things. They haul rice, corn, um, you know, agricultural products, seeds, all the way, all the way down to fertilizer, uh, sulfate, <clears throat> different things like that. They haul all kinds of stuff. All right. So I even hauled apples in a bottom hopper, and I'll get into that here in a minute. But anyway. I always get distracted when things are going on outside. My ADD gets a hold of me and I get distracted. But all right. Now, a bottom hopper pays different than most other freight. Pays different than uh, than a lot of other things. Um, 
as those of y'all know that watch my channel, y'all know I'm not a big supporter of working for percentage. All right. But when it comes to bottom hopper, normally you're a little better on the percentage side than you are on the mileage side. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Bottom hopper freight pays by the ton. All right. It's either going to pay by the ton or by the bushel. All right. If, and then, uh, of course, like if you look on a load board, it'll say, I'm just going to throw a number out there. It might say corn is the commodity. $39 a ton is what it's paying. And it's picking up in Nacogdoches, Texas. And it's delivering in Alexander, Louisiana. All right. So what you would do is. I'm trying to remember. It's been a few years since I hauled bottom hoppers. But I believe I hauled somewhere between 30 and 35 tons. All right. But anyway, for a full load. That's if you're running legal. Now, if I was running illegal, like if I knew I didn't have any scales or anything in between, man, you'd load that trailer down. You'd squat the tires. Put as much on it as you possibly could without hurting anything. You know what I'm saying? Because you're getting paid by the ton. All right, so you would take that $39 a ton or $40 a ton, and I'm just throwing a number out there because it pays more than that, and you would multiply it by how many tons you're going to haul. Let's say I got 30 tons in there, so I'd take that 40 times it by the 30 tons that I got in the, in the trailer. I would usually Google map uh, my distance between... Nacogdoches, Texas, and Alexandria, Louisiana to get my miles, take that total number you got on your tonnage and divide it by your miles. That'll give you a rate per mile. All right. Um, certain commodities pay really well. Uh, one of those commodities being, uh, I hauled sulfate, some type of sulfate. I hauled it up out of Gary, Indiana. Used to haul it up to Wisconsin paid really well it's used in fertilizer uh different types of fertilizer used to pay real good organic man if they put the word organic on anything the price goes up we used to haul organic corn okay you know i'm, I'm not going to get into the debate between organic and not organic but we used to haul organic corn it paid really well i mean it, it was an awesome paying load um, there's a lot of money to be made in bottom hoppers. I'll tell you one of the things. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to put up a picture of the gauge. The, the, you know, when you're loading, when you're loading a bottom hopper, you're either going to load it on a scale, which I'm going to put a picture of that up too, or you're going to load it on a, on flat ground, just out on a farm. Okay. And it's got a pressure gauge on the side. All right. I don't remember the exact pressures for each, but it, you know, we used to load it to a certain point for the front and then finish it off to the, you know, on the back. Um, you want to have those weights, right? I got caught in Oklahoma one time overweight and, and I was overweight in the front. So I literally had to climb up in there with a shovel and shovel that crap to the back. Cause a hopper has got a wall in the middle. It'll come up in a V. So your front hopper and your back hopper are separate. You load the front one, then you load the back one. Some people will load the back one, then the front one. But, you know, there's different reasons. It depends on what you're getting. But uh, I literally had to climb in there middle of the summer. It was like July. And shovel, I think I shoveled, you know, four or 5,000 pounds off the front and into that back hopper so that I could get out of there it sucked so you you you, you want to know those weights you want to pay close attention to them when you first start you probably want to be on a little on the lighter side until you get it down to an art until you get it figured out i'll tell you something else drivers if you're not sitting on flat level ground with that trailer those pressure gauges won't read right and you'll be off somewhere you'll be heavy on the back or heavy on the front um I really don't advise someone who isn't experienced in driving to 
make bottom hoppers the first job. Uh, you really need to know what you're doing. There's, uh, there's a little more involved to it, a little more entailed on it. Uh, a little more math, a little more thinking, more scenarios, more things that can go wrong. But anyway, when they load a bottom hopper, there's a tarp on top. Some guys have the electric deal that opens it for them. I, I never cared for those because if you're, if, if you're lacking any battery power, that thing will get stuck. I mean, I, I've been stuck behind guys that had those tarps up top that were on electric. And sometimes it'd be two or three hours, you know, sitting there. They're either waiting on a mechanic to come out, uh, trying to build up enough charge in their batteries to finish opening it. It sucked. It wasn't reliable. But some guys like it. Some guys prefer it. I always preferred the hand ones. But with the hand crank ones, and I'm going to see if I can find a picture of the back. If I can, I'll put it up right here so you know what I'm talking about. The hand crank ones, when you, when you open them, you have to be careful not to get that tarp messed up. You don't want to tear that tarp. You tear that tarp, you'll lose product. It'll blow away. You're going to get weighed in the beginning, and you're going to get weighed on the end. You know, so there that end weight, if it's off from that beginning weight, you just cost some money, cost somebody some money, probably yourself. Um, the other thing you have to do when you close that tarp and you lock it in, I used to put like an extra half turn on it and then bring it over and set it in the back. It's kind of hard to describe without actually doing it, but uh, you want to climb up the ladder every now and then and check that tarp make sure it's sitting on them them bows the way it's supposed to and see if you can stick your fingers up under the end on the on the front and back of the trailer it's gonna have a little bit of a lip there and that tarp lays up over that lip you should not be able to get your fingers under that tarp and over that lip if you can that tarps too loose and that product it'll blow out of there you'll lose it Little by little going down the highway. You may not even notice it because you're losing it so little. Uh, something else. Bottom hoppers almost always have to get a wash out. And very few places wash them out. Myself, I found that places that washed out tankers would also wash out bottom hoppers. So if you need to get a bottom hopper washed out, you know, any place that washes out tankers is, is a good, good bet that they're going to wash out a, a bottom hopper. Most blue beacons will not wash out a bottom hopper. There's only a few around the country that uh, I know of that would wash them out. If I'm not mistaken, Truck Mat in Iowa, the Iowa 80, that truck wash there, they would they would do bottom hoppers. I think I got a bottom hopper washed out there at one time. When you get them washed out, <clears throat> you're going to open the doors up on the bottom. You'll close them and open them as they're washing it because you want to clean those doors off the other thing you're doing is you're cleaning off the railing and you're cleaning off that seal on the bottom is a plate you got a plate for the front hopper and a plate for the back hopper all right because when you unload the stuff drops down into a uh, usually you drop down into the ground into a grater and then an auger picks it up and runs it up and puts it in the silo that it's going to but anyway and I'll put pictures of that up as well. You want to make sure that that seal is completely clean. There's no gunk, no old product in there, no nothing. Because if it's not, and that door doesn't close all the way or doesn't close properly, you'll lose product out the bottom as well. Okay, so as you can tell, there's more, there's more stuff to worry about. There's more things to pay attention to. Also, when you unload it, some products like corn, corn comes out really easy. Comes out real fast. Whole kernel corn will come out no problem. Don't open that door all the way up and just start dropping that product out of there. You'll drop that product out of there so fast that the trailer will hop. Um, I never had it happen to me, but I've heard of guys, you know, saying it, it's dangerous. Like that trailer will hop two or three feet. 
because you're dropping all that pressure out of there all that pressure is coming off them airbags so fast that the trailer hops could damage the truck as well or your fifth wheel or you could get yourself hurt you know because uh, sometimes when you're unloading you'll climb up the ladder you know and look in make sure everything's going like it's supposed to I used to do it more when I was loading than I did when I was unloading a lot of time you know what I'm saying I would climb up the ladder to make sure it was all out of there before I, before I pulled off normally whenever whenever I was unloading but if for whatever reason you're up on that ladder and that trailer does that you might get yourself hurt or possibly even killed so don't open the door up all the way if it's a fast rolling product another thing too is sometimes it plugs up that that auger system in some places and if you plug up the auger system they're gonna have to shut it down and then you're gonna have to close your door and wait for them to get the uh, auger system cleared out before you can start unloading again so it, it's a it's a pain it's a pain in the rear <coughs> so unload it slow I will say this if you're going if you're thinking of if you're thinking of getting into that line of work or or uh, whatever you one of the questions I always ask a company after I did it the first time <laughs> one of the questions I always ask a company is do you haul DDG I don't know exactly what DDG is it's some kind of uh, ground up corn and I think it has molasses or something in it but uh, that stuff will turn to a brick in that trailer um, I spent seven or eight hours you know trying to unload it you'll get underneath it with an air wand you'll have to lay down on the bottom running an air wand up through it trying to break it loose you'll open those doors all the way up and it'll just be a solid wall it, nothing will fall nothing you got vibrators and for y'all sickos out there they're not the kind of vibrators you think <laughs> they got vibrators they'll either uh, suction cup stick to the side of the hopper or the vibrator will go uh, it'll set in a in a rack and you hook it up to air it'll vibrate it helps that stuff break loose and fall out um, you're also gonna have a hammer and normally on the bottom of hoppers they'll have a railing it'll be at different positions you want to hit the railing not the hopper if you hit the hopper you'll damage it that railing is made to be hit that's what it's for so you'll take that hammer and you'll beat that railing and you'll go all the way around that hopper beating that railing with the vibrator running trying to get that stuff to break loose when you do that though you don't normally want to have the door all the way open because like I was talking about before if you got a product that's not wanting to fall and you got that door all the way open you got the vibrators going and you're beating that thing and then all of a sudden that product breaks loose and you get a couple tons of it coming down at one time you might have a problem so I always cracked my door a little bit I used to open it up probably six seven eight inches turn the vibrators on and then I would start I would start beating that rail I'd start at the bottom and work my way up on the rails um, bottom hopper can be a lot of fun it's also not always but most of the time first come first serve that was one of the things I liked about bottom hopper most of the time you don't have an appointment most of the time it's get loaded get there as fast as you can get unloaded so if you're an owner operator you can turn and burn on bottom hoppers I mean you can literally just turn and burn constant um, if you don't mess around let me see what else is there Ooh, that's probably about it you, you know I mean it, it's a lot of fun I will say this though bottom hopper can be seasonal and that's one of the things I didn't like about it I live in South Texas so uh, for me it was very seasonal but I used to run all over hauling wheat mids uh, corn um, apples oh I'll tell you about the apples I used to haul apples from up in Washington they went out to Michigan and uh, apples actually pays really well it's one of the best paying loads you can haul in a bottom hopper and make apple juice out of it so you get up there to Michigan and you'll unload them apples 
and you're just dropping them down they got a little deal they slide up under your trailer and they'll conveyor it up and it's going into boxes but they're going to make apple juice out of it or different dog foods and different things like that used to haul the dog food plants a lot they get a lot of bottom hoppers but uh <clears throat> it's a really good freight if you live in the right area like i said the middle of the country the middle of the country those guys work year round when i worked for h m we stayed busy year round uh cjl we dispatched ourselves and uh you if you knew what you were doing you could stay busy but if you put yourself in the wrong area you could really mess yourself up certain times of the year but uh anyway that's bottom hoppers um hope the pictures throughout the year kind of help you figure it out i'll put some captions with them so that you know what you're looking at and uh, hope everybody out there staying safe be kind to one another thank you for watching and let's keep trucking